A mad scientist collaborates with his assistant in a twisted experiment to create a male and female zombie couple in hopes of starting a superior race. In Serbia, two children of an ancestral couple, Eric and Monica, play with a doll in their father's laboratory. Shortly after, they position the toy on the mini stocks to decapitate it. The next day, Baroness Katrin picks up her children from school, and they all ride a carriage heading back to their castle. During the journey, the woman stops when she spots one of her servants playing a musical instrument. Suddenly, she notices the couple behind the musician and asks them to reveal themselves. When she realizes it's their stable boy Nicholas, she reprimands him for sleeping around and then leaves. Inside the castle, Baron von Frankenstein asks his assistant Otto if he has cleaned up his laboratory, which is located on the other side of their residence. The servant confidently assures his master that he worked through the night to complete the task. However, the scholar is puzzled by the messy state of his lab, unaware that his children are responsible for it. Shortly after, he reveals his ambitious plan to create the perfect Serbian race. As the Baron and Otto leave the castle, they encounter his wife and sister Katrin, who is arriving with their children. She excitingly informs him that she has withdrawn her children from an unsatisfactory school. When the scientist reminds her that she was the one who selected the school, the woman acknowledges this. However, as she elaborates on her reasons for disliking the educational institution, her husband interrupts, suggesting they continue the conversation during dinner. Following the Baron's departure, Katrin frustratingly expresses that her spouse has become increasingly distant. She notices he is always obsessed with his laboratory work, leaving little time for her and their family. In the castle, the woman scolds her children for their messy room. Later, she expresses her happiness that they left the school, noting that her son and daughter aren't quite as advanced as their classmates. Shortly after, Katrin calls for Olga, their maid, to assist Eric with changing his clothes. While dressing Monica, the mother discusses that when others speak about them, it's often rooted in jealousy. As she brushes her daughter's hair, she assures her that she will make her look beautiful. In his laboratory, the Baron and Otto extract organs from corpses, all part of their intent to create the perfect Serbian man and woman. That evening during dinner with his family, the scientist reveals his plan to send the children overseas for their education. However, Katrina opposes this idea, arguing that kids will learn more if they stay with them. She believes even their parents would object, leading the couple to speak ill about their folks. Suddenly, the scientist reprimands his wife for bringing up a private matter in the presence of their children. Switching to a different topic, Katrin inquires about activities for the children now that they are back home. The Baron suggests they could have a picnic for the next day. The following morning, as the pious man Sacha is working, his friend Nicholas approaches him and asks if he wants to become a monk. In response, the laborer asserts that he has no intention of changing his mind as he wishes to lead a secluded life. Upon hearing this, the promiscuous stable boy points out that his friend would miss out on a lot by choosing the monastic path. He then invites the quiet man to accompany him to a brothel in town so he can witness him with other women. Inside the laboratory, the Baron works on perfecting his female zombie. While doing so, he expresses frustration over a problematic fallopian tube removed from one of the corpses, indicating his need for a replacement. While enjoying a picnic outdoors that morning, Katrin and the the children's apples fall, prompting the woman to discover Nicholas and his partner engaging in a romantic encounter during work hours. She addresses his misconduct and requests his presence at the castle the next day. Afterward, she commands Eric and Monica to move their picnic blanket to another spot. Meanwhile, after assembling his female zombie, the Baron works on the male creation. He then emphasizes the need to find another man's head for the torso that Otto is completing. The scientist stresses that they need a man who has a charismatic way with women, as it is essential for him to fall in love with a female zombie instantly. He plans for them to bear children that align with his vision to create a new race that will follow his orders. The Baron adds that they should conduct their search at a brothel because it is where they can find a promiscuous man. When Otto questions whether the scholar has been to such a place before, the man reveals that he had decided to go with his classmates once while in medical school. However, he remembers the experience as unpleasant because he found the women overly developed. He wonders why society can considered courtesans beautiful more than his wife or creation. Little did he know, his children were listening to their conversation, 
Meanwhile, Nicholas takes his pious friend Sacha to a brothel and requests the courtesans to entertain him. However, the aspiring monk remains untempted by the woman's advances. Outside the brothel, the Baron and Otto patiently wait for a promiscuous man to exit as they plan to capture and decapitate him. Suddenly, a lizard appears, prompting the two courtesans to go outside the brothel out of fear. A concerned Sacha heads out the door, driving the scientist to assume he made love with the two women. As a result, the scholar becomes convinced that the pious servant is the man they're looking for. Later that evening, Katrine kisses her children goodnight and directs Olga to prepare a special breakfast for her and a guest the following day. Meanwhile, the Baron and Otto take cover behind the bushes, armed with a pair of head clippers. Spotting Sacha's arrival with the drunken Nicholas, the scientist seizes the opportunity and pursues the aspiring monk, ultimately decapitating him. The following day, Nicholas awakens and shockingly finds his headless friend beside him. He proceeds to carry the lifeless body and buries it on the side of the road. Meanwhile, the Baron attaches Sacha's head to the male zombie's torso in the laboratory, confident that he's closer to his dream of starting a new race. Inside the castle, Nicholas arrives upon Katrine's order and discovers that she intends to fire him because of his misconduct. In response, the stable boy mentions that he was already planning to leave and has come to collect his wages. Shortly after, he shares the news of what happened to his friend. Later in their conversation, the woman leans in and allures the laborer, revealing her plan to hire him to fulfill her sensual desires. Following this, their kiss leads to a steamy moment between them. The following day, Katrine informs her husband they will have a new person working in the castle. Upon hearing this, the Baron becomes annoyed, recalling their previous agreement not to hire male servants to avoid disrupting his work. In response, the woman assures her spouse that the new laborer won't cause any disturbance as she will ensure he stays busy. Later, the Baron and Otto collaborate in the laboratory, utilizing a machine to electrocute and finally bring the male and female corpses to life. Following this, the scientists test their ability to follow commands by directing them to move their arms and heads. When they comply with his instructions, the scholar feels fulfilled. Next, he notes that the zombies must procreate to give birth to offspring and thus initiate a new race. That evening, Katrin presents Nicholas as the new servant for the castle. In response, the scientist instructs Otto to bring the two undead creatures to the dining area. He then introduces the pair as his new laboratory assistants to his wife. When Nicholas arrives in the room, he recognizes the male guest as his pious friend. In turn, the zombified Sacha looks at him as if he knows him too. As the servants start serving the undead guests, the Baron clarifies that they are not yet prepared to eat solid food. Not long after, the scientist confides in Katrin, expressing concern over the servant's strange behavior towards the guests. Later that evening, Katrin confronts Nicholas regarding his attitude toward her husband's new laboratory assistants. In response, the man admits that he recognized one of them as his friend, who was decapitated the other night. However, the servant suddenly expresses his doubt when he notices that his late friend is the same height as him. But the lab assistant is oddly tall. Subsequently, Nicholas becomes curious about the Baron's occupation. In response, the woman explains that her husband is a scholar who dedicates extensive hours to his laboratory work. However, she confesses that she doesn't know the details of his activities, as they lead separate lives. Upon hearing this, the servant asserts that a wife should know her husband's work, but Katrine clarifies that she and her husband seldom talk during dinner. She only knows that her spouse's job involves something related to electrical energy. The woman also reveals that the scientist has a private laboratory on the other side of the castle, which he built seven years ago. Upon hearing this, the worried Nicholas plans to investigate the place to figure out what truly happened to Sacha. However, Katrine intervenes, claiming that he should forget about his friend and focus on his duties. Meanwhile, Eric and Monica sneak into their father's lab to play with a severed hand. Then, they notice a strange glow behind a cabinet and decide to investigate. When they open it, they shockingly find a beating heart inside. Upon hearing their father's arrival, the children rush to find a hiding spot, which leads them to an empty chamber filled with lizards and bats. In the laboratory, the Baron confides in Otto about his wife's attraction to their new servant. In response, the assistant mentions that he finds the man familiar, but the scientist brushes it off, stating that to him, all men look alike except for his Serbian creation. Later, the scholar discovers Katrin's affair with Nicholas. Meanwhile, Olga searches for the children. She stumbles into the laboratory but finds the two zombies bound to the table. Suddenly, Otto arrives and catches the maid. He then pursues and takes advantage of her. 
However, he accidentally rips her chest open, ending her life. Meanwhile, with the assistance of Eric and Monica, Nicholas manages to get to the other side of the castle. However, the scholar spots the servant and reprimands him for entering a restricted area. He threatens to fire him, causing the laborer to retreat. Unable to enter the laboratory, the servant reaches out to the children, who show him another path. With the kid's help, Nicholas finds another area where he can observe the laboratory through a window. There, he witnesses the Baron's attempt to facilitate the reproduction of the zombies. The scientist directs his female creation to kiss the zombified Sacha, who doesn't reciprocate. As a result, the Baron becomes increasingly frustrated and begins to suspect that someone may have entered his laboratory and tampered with his experiments. Deeply disturbed by what he saw, Nicholas rushes back to the castle and awakens Katrin to share the information. In response, the woman scolds the servant for intruding into her husband's work, asserting that the scholar knows what he's doing. Doing. When he disagrees, she insults him, provoking him to strike her. In the meantime, the Baron continues to vent his frustration and tells Otto his suspicion that his sister is interfering with his work. He justifies this belief by stating that she has always been jealous of his accomplishments. Afterward, the scientist asks Eric for help in catching the intruder. However, the boy lies and claims he hasn't seen anyone enter the lab. Unbeknownst to the Baron, Nicholas successfully infiltrates the laboratory and attempts to rescue his zombified friend. He lifts the table and apologizes to the undead man, expressing regret for taking him to the brothel. In the castle, the scientist confronts Katrin, holding her responsible for the failure of his experiment. In response, the woman offers to share what he knows, but only if her husband agrees to fulfill her wish to have a new entertainer. When the Baron promises to grant her request, she discloses that Nicholas must be in the laboratory as they speak because he is friends with Sacha, the male zombie. Meanwhile, the servant releases his friend and suggests attaching his head to his original body. However, the undead man declines, pointing out that it doesn't matter. Despite this, the servant proceeds with his plan and takes the female zombie with them. However, just as they're about to leave, the Baron and Otto block their way. The scientist then commands his male creation to strangle Nicholas and make him unconscious. When the servant manages to escape, the undead man catches him and shoves him down the stairs, causing him to fall to the floor. When Nicholas is finally unconscious, the Baron reveals his plan to extract the man's brain because it has the right instincts that he wants. Shortly after, Katrin arrives and expresses happiness when she sees her former entertainer on the floor. Keeping his word, the scientist summons the undead Sacha and assigns him to his sister as her new entertainer. However, he cautions her that the zombie's wounds are not fully healed yet. Upon hearing this, Otto interjects, arguing that the scholar's creation shouldn't leave the laboratory. In response, the Baron asserts that his sister assisted in identifying the intruder and that he must fulfill her her request. However, the assistant claims that Katrin will only spoil the male zombie, leading the irritated scholar to dismiss his statement. Following this, the woman and the undead man leave the lab, and the scientist immediately directs his assistant to dismember Nicholas. When Otto refuses, the scientist says he'll do it himself and instructs his servant to tie up the man instead and put his female creation away. As soon as the Baron leaves, the assistant expresses his frustration about always following the scholar's orders. Meanwhile, Katrin orders her new servant to fulfill her desires. When she asks him to hold her more tightly, the undead man complies but applies strong force, resulting in the woman's demise. In the laboratory, Nicholas is suspended mid-air secured to a crane as he observes the rebellious Otto making love with a zombie. However, the assistant accidentally breaks the undead woman open, resulting in her disembowelment. Seconds later, the Baron arrives and sees what happened. He scolds his assistant for destroying his creation and strangles him to his demise. While expressing frustration about finding a new female, the zombified Sacha arrives carrying the lifeless Katrin in his arms. Witnessing this, the scholar grieves the loss of his wife and sister. Overwhelmed by anger, he orders his male creation to terminate Nicholas, believing he caused all his problems. However, Sacha only looks at the scientist and refuses to do his order. Instead, he approaches the Baron, causing him to hide in another room. Quickly, the undead man shuts the door, severing the man's hand. As the Baron loses so much blood, he attempts to reattach his hand to his arm. When his efforts prove unsuccessful, he becomes increasingly agitated, retrieves a sharp tool, and decides to terminate Nicholas. As he is about to strike the bound servant, Sacha thrusts a pole through the scientist's abdomen, ending his life. In his final moments, the mad scientist declares that his work will continue to live on, with the undead man serving as proof of his brilliant mind. Following the Baron's demise, Nicholas asks 
his friend to free him. However, the zombie believes he is better off lifeless and proceeds to disembowel himself. Shortly after, Eric and Monica arrive. Instead of releasing the bound man, they look at the beating heart in the cabinet. Then they get some scalpels and smile at each other. The girl holds the sharp tool before Nicholas and signals her brother to operate the crane's wheel, elevating the servant further. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.